Hello everybody, I am Sultana Hagarika from CHS Kamei College, Bidrugar, Assam. Now, under the initiative of Geological Society of Assam, I am going to present the chapter U Genesis under Gametogenesis, which is in the syllabus of fourth term measure. The learning outcome of this chapter is the cycle of oogenesis and follicular development, phases of oogenesis, pre-vitalogenesis and vitalogenesis, etc. Oogenesis is the period of growth, differentiation and maturation occurring in female gonads or ovaries during which the egg or ovum acquires its developing potential. Oogenesis starts with the process of developing primary oocytes which occur via the transformation of oogonia into primary oocytes and the process is called oocytogenesis. Oogenesis differs from spermatogenesis in that it begins in the fetus prior to birth. Ovum is a unique cell which has all the properties to develop into a new individual when segregated from the organism. In development, at the time of gastrulation, a small group of cells are put aside to later form oocytes and spermatozoa. This population of cells are called primordial germ cells. These cells also migrate initially into the posterior endoderm that forms the hindgut and from there into the zenithal ridge that will be the site of developing goddess. From this time, there occurs a multiplication phase leading to the formation of ugonia, which is diploid in nature. The site of oogenesis is ovary. This is the diagram of cycle of oogenesis and follicular development. Phases of oogenesis. It has three phases, that is multiplication phase, growth phase and maturation phase. In multiplication phase, the primordial germ cells undergo multiplication by mitotic division to form oogonia. The oogonia cell divides repeatedly by mitosis and become primary oocytes. Primary oocytes enter into a growth phase. Now in growth phase, tends to be very long phase of oogenesis. Its primary oocyte gets surrounded by a granulosa cell layer to create primary follicles. In maturation phase, the first meiotic division segregates the primary oocyte into two uneven haploid daughter cells known as large secondary oocytes and small first polar body. The second meiotic division results in second polar body and a functional oocyte. The different phases of oogenesis can also be subdivided as follows. Oogenesis divided into pre-meotic phase and meotic phase and meotic phase divided into pre-vitalogenesis and vitalogenesis. Pre-meotic 
free meiotic phase, the primordial germ cells start migrating from the endoderm and divide repeatedly to form the eugonia. Multiplication phase begins at this stage. The eugonia multiply by the meiotic divisions and form the primary oocyte. Neotic phase. At this stage, the primary oocyte undergo first meiotic division, resulting in the formation of secondary oocyte and first polar body. Meiosis second occurs after fertilization, forming the second polar body and the zygote. It has two subphases, that is, pre-vitalogenesis and vitalogenesis. The figure also showing the development. Pre-vitalogenesis. It is also known as the growth phase of primary oocyte. Pre-vitalogenesis is characterized by the tremendous increase in the volume of following substances, that is, growth of nuclear material and growth of cytoplasmic substances. Growth of nuclear material. The nucleus of oocyte increase in size due to the accumulation of large amount of nuclear sap and the nuclei of advanced oocyte becomes flooded with nuclear fluid. The nucleus then undergoes meiosis and enters into the first prophase. The homologous chromosomes pair together and increase in length. The chromosomes of primary oocytes develop thin loops on their sides having brass-like appearance which are known as lamp brush. The lamp brass chromosomes are the active site of gene action and the site of mRNA synthesis which are involved in protein synthesis in cytoplasm. Growth of cytoplasmic substances. The volume of the cytoplasm increases qualitatively and quantitatively changes in the cytoplasmic substances has been observed during this period. The mitochondria, which are fewer in number in young oocytes, increase remarkably during growth phase. The ribosomes become very numerous in the developing oocytes. The endoplasmic reticulum in young oocytes is in the form of numerous small vesicles, while in mature oocytes, here appear as double membranous structures with no cytoplasm. Golgi bodies help in the synthesis of cortical granules which contribute material for the synthesis of fertilization membrane at the time of fertilization. Vitalogenesis. Vitalogenesis involves the synthesis of yolk to be stored in the ovum. The increase in the volume of oocyte during growth phase is strongly due to the accumulation of yolk or the nutritive substances in the egg cytoplasm. Regarding the actual site of vitalogenesis, or synthesis of yolk, there are two views. Site of vitalogenesis. First view, vitalogenesis takes place inside the oocyte itself, inside modified mitochondria. This has been reported in some amphibians and fishes. Second view, Yolk is synthesized outside the ovary and forms the oocyte. 
in most vertebrates, the liver is the site of yolk synthesis and it is fat bodies in insects. The yolk is finally deposited in the cytoplasm of oocytes in the form of yolk granules. Graphene follicle. In mammals, the young oocyte or the developing ovum and the surrounding follicle cells constitute a graphene follicle. Antrum is the eccentric cavity in most of follicle cells. It is filled with a fluid called liquid folliculi. This is the figure of a mature graphene follicle. Structure of the egg or ovum. The fully developed or mature female germ cell is referred to as egg or ovum. The ovum has been defined as female germ cell after its completion of entire maturation phase or mitotic division or before fertilization. In general, the shape of egg is rounded or spherical. In some insects, it may be cylindrical or elongated, whereas egg of magazine and gonoid fishes are oval in shape. This is the figure of a structure of ovum. The cavity is surrounded by three layers, that is, an inner membrane granulosa, a middle theca interna, and outer theca externa. The oocyte is surrounded by some granulosa cells called cumulus euphoricus. The granulosa cells which attach the oocyte to the wall of the follicle constitute discus prolyseras, a homogeneous membrane which occurs between the oocyte and the follicle cells is called zona pellucida. Yolk or deutoplasm or metaplasm. The yolk represents the non-living reserve food material of certain types of animal eggs. It may occur as hair, ovoid or this shape and usually found to accumulate at the lower hemisphere of the ovum. The yolk contains proteins, water, fat, carbohydrates and inorganic salts. Pigment granules. Certain types of animal eggs are characterized by the presence of pigment granules in the cytoplasm. In some group of invertebrate animals, such as in the tunicate or and in the frog, the pigment granules exhibit regional distribution. For example, in frog eggs, the black pigment granules are closely packed together in the peripheral oocytoplasm and thus adjacent to the plasma membrane. The two-thirds of the upper hemisphere is black in color due to pigmentation, while the lower one-third appears creamy white as it is devoid of any pigment granules. Polarity Animal eggs exhibit definite polarity. These exhibit distinction between the two hemispheres of the egg. The upper hemisphere of ovum is referred to as animal pole and the lower hemisphere of the ovum is referred to as digital pole. 
the animal pole is generally characterized by the location of the polar body. The nucleus also lies in the animal hemisphere. The figure showing the animal and vegetal pole of the egg. In frog egg, two-thirds of the animal pole cytoplasm is darkly pigmented. Physiologically, the animal pole shows greater physical activity. On the other hand, vegetal pole shows greater accumulation of yolk since it is specifically heavier than the other cell inclusion. Now in the conclusion, we can say that most of the cytoplasm remain in the functional ovum. Pugenesis produces haploid ovum. Variation may occur due to crossing over during meiosis 1. Lastly, without oogenesis, there is no fertilization, no reproduction and no life. Thank you. Thank you very much for concentrating my lecture. Thank you again.